Oh, hi there, Art Zone. Hey, Nancy. It's me, Jed Dunkerley. You remember? Well, it has been 10 years. Wow, 10 years. 10 years, can you believe it? Hey, I just wanna say thank you for keeping art squarely in the zone for 10 years. Cheers. Hi there, I'm Nancy Gubby here at beautiful Georgetown Stables and we have put together a wonderful show for you. Take a look. Jay Reinhardt sets up shop. I've watched people fall in love with art for years and I've fallen in love with art. Get it, get it over with. Go ahead. Coca curates the calendar. <laughs> a visit to the AZ vault. And music from Gus Clark and the least of his problems. You read the paper, shake your head, and say what a shame. But in a week, can you recall their names? We'll begin with Indigo Mist, an experimental music group of visionary artists, all of whom are faculty in the music department at the University of Washington. Indigo Mist is a platform for experimentalists. is the organization of sounds and it could be really abstract, it could be emotional, it may not be emotional, it could be intellectual and so with music we're doing it with sounds. It's a way to communicate in the same way that when you hear a siren you know exactly what's going on and you need to move out of the way. Okay, so here's the thing. We want people to like our music, but we don't want them to like it so much that we're going to be restrained by doing things that are rote. As soon as I do that, when I listen back, it, it actually really sucks, you know, to me. And maybe I listen back, it's like, well, it's better than that guy's whose music is making millions of dollars, but to me it sucks. There's a chance that uh, listeners will be moved by music that they theoretically don't completely understand. If people are not into it, we're going to do it anyway because this is what we're doing. Music, I think, is something you need to perceive and you need to let go of the understanding part. Instead of thinking about being outside the box, I think the idea is that we make the box huge. You're always framed. We need frames. We can't understand things without frames. Just make the frame bigger. And then you can explore all you know, this larger area of frame. When you let go of the understanding part, then you can enjoy it. All music is about listening. All improvised music is about super listening. This music is about super, super duper listening. I'm just listening as hard as I can and allowing myself to follow my intuition and my intuition will tell me it's time to play or it's time to not play. They are waiting for these things to happen, to react to them. 
I feel like I don't get startled very often. It's like, oh, that happened. I would never feel like, oh, they played that. Um, so I think that's why we can play together. Sometimes after we play, what's even more important is that we all get down to the Ave and go to Schultz's and have our beer and my fried chicken and Juan's uh, vegetarian burger, you know, whatever it is. Because that's when we start to really talk and really get to know each other outside of music as human beings. Just time spent together, musically and otherwise. There's no substitute for that. I feel that it's part of the ritual. Doing that adds to the musical trust that we have. And so when we get together and play, it's a deep, deep trust. There really are different points of view about improvisation. And there are some people who really believe strongly um, that it should always be new and you should never repeat things. You know, I want to do it again better, um, but we're not. We're going to do it again differently. We play our game and, and these people join our game. There isn't a lot that's like this. This is something really, really individual and special. It's just ever so different than anything I've experienced. You just let go and you let your creativity do its thing and, and whatever art it is, it's going to make sense and it's going to be uniquely your expression. Indigo Mist plays Monday, January 13th at the Royal Room in Columbia City. Keep up with the group's full performance schedule on Facebook. The Seattle gallery scene recently welcomed a new kid to the block. It's called J. Reinhardt Gallery. And here to talk about the mission and the vision is founder and owner Judith Reinhardt, hello. Hi. hi. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, you have a long history working in art galleries. Um, Foster White, correct, mm -hmm. in Pioneer Square, and Winston Walker in South Lake Union. Yep. So what made you decide, hey, I want to open my own place? <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there were a lot of there were a lot of factors. I think um, professionally it just felt like the next step. Mm -hmm. um, among the gallery community, we've, we've lost a number of galleries over the years for various reasons. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing all of these artists that didn't have a home. And I went, well, I think now's the time to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so I made that leap. I started to talk to the artists that I knew and wanted them to show. Yeah. And I was surprised at the, the level of excitement that was was being directed kind of, of like yes way. let's do it mm -hmm. i love this line from your gallery mission statement we deal in the art of falling in love with art explain what that means um <laughs> i i've watched people fall in love with art mm. for years and i've fallen in love with art yeah over time where you walk into a gallery and you see a piece of art in you person just, you hone in and you hone in and you just have this feeling of, I have fallen in love with this. I gotta have I've it. I've gotta have it. And I, I've watched this over the years. Seasoned collectors who know that that's what they're doing to you know, young collectors who this might be their first piece of art they've ever bought. Mm -hmm. And then it opens up this whole new world. Well, you have uh, a roster of 16 artists. Jane Reinhardt has 16. How did you choose this particular group of 16? And, and by the way, it's, it's a great roster. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. Um, I think it started as, what what I was seeing of like where these artists should be. And then as I kind of started talking to them and developing the, the gallery and developing the aesthetic, it came down to process. Mm -hmm. Every single one of my artists have some kind of process heavy, mm -hmm. like a practice. Oh, interesting. So there's a photographer who takes tiny little photographs of plants from her garden that she grows mm -hmm. and then digitally collages them together. So it's this year long process and cycle of growing and mm -hmm. photographing and collaging. I love that in a world where everything is so fast and immediate, 
everything slowed down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I have a couple of painters who are just working the canvas and painting and removing and adding and, scraping. and removing and scraping mm -hmm. and, and creating something that's that's not just this immediate thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And even um, a couple of the printmakers I show, in order to get the plate that they're printing of on, it's this super technical process that yeah. took years and years to develop and then to actually be able to just do it in that one instance mm -hmm. is incredibly difficult. So you obviously believe in these artists that you yes. represent. So if an artist's work does not sell, how do you handle that as a business person? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah, I bet <laughs> it is. Yeah, because yeah. um, I tell artists that uh, you know the the relationship with the gallery is all like a, it's a marriage, it's a partnership. Like mm. that's the end goal is we're here to promote and sell your work. Mm -hmm. And I've not had an instant yet in my in my career of like okay we need to have that that moment of is this working? Is it not? Right. Do we break up? Do we not? And also giving artists freedom of like if I'm not selling your work, mm -hmm. I'm not doing you any favors. Mm -hmm where can you sell your work? Mm -hmm. It's not about just only sales here. Yeah. It's like, I want to make it work for you mm -hmm. somewhere if it's yeah. not here. So you've created a living room in the center of your gallery. There's mm -hmm. a couch, chairs, coffee yeah. table. Uh, it, very homey vibe. What what was uh, behind that design decision? So that decision was, uh, was, was very deliberate in that I live with art mm -hmm. and most of us live with art. Yeah. And how do I envision artwork in my home? Most galleries uh, by design have uh, it's a very white walls. It's a big space. Can be intimidating. It can be very intimidating, mm -hmm. um, and and it's hard to imagine a painting on a, a giant white wall how that could fit into your space. Right. And then also, I think it gives it a very comfortable space. If you can come in, you can have a sit. You mm -hmm. can have a cup of coffee and look at the art, mm -hmm. and it invites conversation um, and community. Yeah, it's a nice feel. All right, I'm going to go over a few common misconceptions mm -hmm. about visiting a gallery. Yeah. Okay. Number one, you have to buy something if you go into a gallery. No. No. Not, no. not true at all. Not right? true at all. Just go in and look. All right. Number two, if you don't like a piece of art, it must be good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, no. <laughs> um, art, it's, it's very subjective. It's what you love. You have to know about art. No. No. You don't have to be educated. Yeah. You, ha you have to be willing to walk into a space mm -hmm. and feel something. Mm -hmm. uh, four, and you kind of already touched on this, you can't ask questions. Of course you can ask Of course questions. you can ask questions. Right. Yeah. I spend months and months reading up on this one exhibition that I'm putting on. Mm -hmm. Ask me all the questions because right. I have You're going to know. <laughs> right. And finally, gallery owners want to make you feel stupid. I hope not. <laughs> I think that's one of those things yeah. that people think like, oh, they're looking to kind of make no. me feel like I'm not smart or no, I'm not good. No, or, no, yeah. not at all. Yeah. Um, I think quite the opposite. I mean, if, if you want an education, I'm happy to give you an education. If you right. want to just come in and look and leave, sit on the couch, come and sit on the couch. Have a cup of coffee, that's sit on the couch fine. and just look around. Yeah. 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 Why mm. is it important to own original art? Oh, I th think owning original art is. Uh, it's this visceral experience of, mm -hmm. I mean, it goes back to falling in love with it. That This is a unique piece that somebody made with their hands. Mm -hmm. And by bringing that into your home, it, it gives you a connection to that person. It gives you a connection to the art world. It helps you kind of understand the importance of um, uh, real things mm -hmm. and the, the reality of things. And a connection to yourself. Connection to yourself. Of what appeals to yeah. you, what draws you. Having right? this, having like a wall of things that you love is yeah. very exciting. It is, <laughs> it's very exciting. Well, the Seattle, we're delighted that you have opened your doors. It's okay. really wonderful to have you in the city. Uh, Jay Reinhardt Gallery is open Tuesday through Saturday and their current show, Salon Style, features 10 of the gallery's artists is up now through December 21st. Well, thank you so much, Judith. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers to you. Cheers to art. Cheers to originality. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> you want some of mine? It's, it's vodka. Yeah. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> <laughs>
See, I'm gonna cry, I can't. But this has turned out to be uh, more than I expected. And I am beyond grateful. I don't think that I can really put into words how appreciative I am. I believe that dance saves lives and not just just getting on stage and performing, but what it teaches you, you know, determination, persistence, um, courage. My overall goal is to show or to help young artists or young students cultivate those things. It's That's really important to me. I want to change people's lives the way that this art form has changed mine. Beautiful, pedal steel. Our musical guest, Gus Clark, and the least of his problems. Indeed. This indeed is Gus Clark. So good to see you. Good to see you. Last Nancy. time I think it was with Country Lips. It was indeed. Right, right. Well, great to have you back. Um, so before we chat a bit, why don't we meet the least of your problems, starting with this lovely fiddle player. Oh, this here is uh, my dear musical sister, Annie Tater Tot Ford <laughs> on the fiddle. I love that name. Annie? Got Wesley Coffee and Cigarettes Amundsen on the upright Bull Goose fiddle. <laughs> hey man. Back there in the back is Kelly Swiss Army bandmate Van Camp. Oh my god, these are great names. And pedal steel. And on the pedal steel, Owen the Slayer Thayer. God, those are the greatest names ever. Did you, right now, did you come up with them? No, I okay, paid some a lot of money to come up with those. <laughs> to write that stuff. Yes, All right, can't so make you, that up. You're a youngster, early 30s ish. Indeed. And um, but your your musical influences or what you draw from is really draws back to the 1920s or maybe earlier. Than yeah, that. 20s through the 50s and 60s. Where did much. this broad scope of music interest come from? Uh, my dad exposed me to a lot of cool music when I was a kid and a lot of stuff from the 60s, and I sort of on my own traced it back as mm. a history nerd to sort of asking myself. Where did this come from and where did that come from? Mm -hmm. Which eventually takes you back to the 20s and 30s where none of the genres exist. The blues was the country, was the jazz, you know, it all overlapped. Mm -hmm. And then I think for me, a lot of like the 50s and 60s country stuff was a really nice place where that all met in a way that was pop oriented, yeah. but still really focused on tradition. It's such a great sound. Um, and I know you've got a, you're working on a record. Early 2020 yeah. is coming out. Yes. A title. TBD, we don't know quite yet, but we're thinking maybe March-ish. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, something like that. And I know you're gonna play us a couple of songs off of, of the record, yeah. correct? Uh, before you perform, though, um, be, you know, whenever we have a band on, every, every show, we always ask the band, what can we provide for you to make your experience a bit more pleasant? And Gus, you asked for an emotional support puppy or a kitten. Do you recall this? I did. Well, ask and you shall receive. Oh, Kate. Yes, indeed. This is Billy Corgan. Uh, well, of course, uh, Billy Corgan is from Motley Zoo Animal Rescue. Oh. And so, and, and Billy will be uh, up for adoption. And we will, of course, let you know, and you know when that happens. Um, but so are you feeling, are you feeling emotionally supported? Very That's the much. most important thing. Annie, yeah? How about y'all? So, so supported. Okay, so you ready to do, do a song? I think so. Okay. Are you ready? This could be your okay. the band dog, I think, right? I think he's hired. Okay, he's hired. All right, so uh, do you want to come in and get him, Kate? Uh, thank you. Billy, you've done your job well. I'll see you later, Motley buddy. Zoo, we love you. All right, so you ready to do this thing, everybody? Let's do it. All right. Gus Clark and the least of his problems. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. Well, I hope I die young. Yeah, I hope I die young. If I'm not too old, I'm too old to die young. I stay out late. I stay out all night. I wake up in the morning.
just too wicked And I got a bad habit I can't seem to kick it So I hope I die young Yeah, I hope I die young If I'm not too Gus Clark and the least of his problems live at the Woodenville Cut Shop on Thursday, December 12th, and track their 2020 performance schedule and release date of the new record at GusClarkMusic.com. Also, the adorable puppy Billy Corgan is available for adoption through Motley Zoo Animal Rescue. More information is on their website. I'm Nicole DeMent, and this is my curated calendar of events. First up at King Street Station, brighter future, to be heard, to be seen, to be free. This exhibition features visual art created by more than 50 local artists of color reflecting on freedom. The dynamic pieces were chosen from the Ethnic Heritage Art Gallery's artist roster and from artists in the general public. See the show now through January 11th, 2020. Saturday nights at Hotel Sorrento are swanky, swingin', and suave. Sorrento Nights features Sunday and Mr. Gessel, the award-winning wife and husband team, vocalist Kate Foss, and guitarist Jason Gessel. Their live performance brings back sounds from a bygone era and can be described in a single word, delightful. Catch them at the Sorrento's Fireside Room on Saturday, December 14th. If you're looking to be entertained, or to entertain, then you'll want to check out the Moth Story Slam event called Traditions. Participants prepare a five-minute story about rituals, customs, birth rites, or lore. From Friday night football to Sunday family FaceTime, anything goes. Traditions takes place at St. Mark's Bloedel Hall on Friday, December 20th. And I am thrilled to tell you about COCA's current show, Northwest Mystics 2019, women of the Pacific Northwest. This exhibit is inspired in part by the life and work of Zoe Dussain, the gallery owner and art promoter who dedicated her career to presenting artists who became known as the mystic painters of the Northwest. This show features work by contemporary women artists and displays the visceral sensuality and playfulness of the feminine mystique through sculpture, painting, musical performance, and video. You can see the exhibit now through December 21st at Center on Contemporary Art. Thanks, Nicole. Well, the holidays are upon us, and that translates into a million entertainment options, including this place, Enchant Christmas, presents Mischievous, an annual event that has something for absolutely everyone. The world's largest Christmas light maze, vodka lemonade, a Christmas market curated by Urban Craft Uprising that features over 40 local artisans selling unique merch. I'm just a reindeer head. Vodka lemonade. Santa Claus, of course, has his own special spot. And a long and winding ice skating trail. Oh, oh, and vodka lemonade. More information, including how to get tickets, is at EnchantChristmas.com. And that's a wrap. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to grab a real quick drink with Santa. So have a great week, and I'll see you real soon. Oh, Santa, it's time for a hot toddy. Where are you, big guy? I don't have any answers, but I'd like you to know I care. So I'll send out all my little thoughts and prayers Thoughts and prayers A whole lot of good they'll do I'd send money But my bills are overdue And these empty gestures
Park Zone is filmed on location at Georgetown Stables, the coolest event space in Seattle. More information is at georgetownstables.com.